I have been dying to show you all footage of our new game, Samurado. That's actually a lie. I am highly insecure about showing my work when I feel like it's not perfect, but I am a game developer and this is the nature of things. So here goes. And obviously I am joking, this is not it. But this is what happened the last time I tried to make a roguelike, so it has been a while. So hopefully the new one turns out better. So here it is for real, allow me to introduce Samurado, a ridiculously fast-paced roguelike game where you play as an enraged avocado out for blood after your whole family's insides were scooped out and used for avocado toast. Uh -huh. If you are new to the channel, we set out on a ridiculous challenge to try to create a game for Steam in 90 days. We are somehow already past the halfway point, so this game is going to be released hopefully sometime in the next couple of months. So be sure to wishlist the game on Steam, which we do know is due for an update. That is coming. There is so much to do, but wishlist it. It's going to be awesome. And I got to tell you, the journey to get to this point has been special. I have never had to rush the production of content so much before. And I might have overscoped a little bit, but I'm not setting out to make a game that actually works like a real video game in 90 days. I'm setting out to make a game that is unique and stands out and is fun in 90 days. So I started, as always, with a Trello board. A hilariously optimistic Trello board. Now the problem with planning things this way is that you have no idea how long things are going to take when you put them up on your Trello board. But I mean, we did plan the thing, so that's gotta count for something. So progress so far. The first week was just the player and the controls. It is all set up to work for the gamepad or keyboard and mouse, and all the player abilities are done. You can do a melee attack, a single target ranged attack, a different ranged attack for crowd control that can be upgraded to the point of insanity. <laughs> Interestingly, the hardest part in the first week was the billion animations I needed to make. I am so slow with creating animations, and I thought that the lack of feet and arms on the character would make it easier, but somehow I just wound up being more confused because of that. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out though. Week two was foundational stuff. A screen shake system, an audio manager with all of the menu controls, key rebinding options for some reason this early on, object pooling for performance, blah blah blah, all that boring stuff. But also, the blood. This was easily the highlight of that week. Creating all these different blood effects and particle systems. I had initially pictured like geysers and waterfalls and just making the whole thing absolutely over the top and ridiculous. Maybe it's too much, I don't know, but it makes me happy. The blood effects are made in the visual effect graph, which is much more performant with the trade-off of not really having any good collision detection. So blood does go beyond the walls and stuff, which honestly I'm fine with. While I did all of that, Nikki got to work on these adorable little guys. And I was worried that these guys would be hard to animate too, but it turns out their tiny little stumps actually helped me quite a lot. Look at them. They're so cute. Now at this point, I thought that I would be clever and create a system that would make it very, very easy to create logic for all different kinds of enemies. So I spent an entire week creating this perfect system that would allow me to create a high number of enemies very quickly. And it turned out really cool. You can create the logic and literally just plug it right in and everything just works. I'm pretty proud of it, but I lost a week to that. And in a 90 day challenge, spending seven of those days creating a system that allows you to create more content more quickly is, I don't know, I don't know if it was a good idea or not. I didn't really think it would take me a whole week, to be honest. But I did get three enemies done, which is not a lot, but it is enough for a demo, which is what we're working on right now, which is due in a month, by the way. But if you don't want to wait for a demo and you want access to more updates and alpha builds and all of that good stuff while we work on this game, then consider supporting us on Patreon. We post all kinds of exclusive and early access content there. Next, I had to go back and rewrite the player controls because they didn't feel responsive enough. So that was a few more days lost, and I didn't account for that on my Trello board. Now, the thing that I really want to geek out to you guys about for a second is the procedural levels. I did not code this system myself. I bought an asset for it, which has saved me so much time. It is actually so awesome that I'm going to go ahead and throw a link down in the description below because it is worth every penny. It is awesome. Normally, the problem with procedural levels is you lose something. You lose that handcrafted feel to your levels that algorithms just can't really replicate. But with this system, I get both. It saves me a ton of work, but it also gives me complete control over what the rooms look like and how the rooms are connected together. And before I show you how it works, I have a quick announcement from Unity, who is the sponsor of this video. If you are crazy enough to try to release a game on Steam in 90 days, which Nikki and I are, you're going to need help. And one of the most efficient and cost-effective methods of saving you time when working on your game is through professionally crafted game assets. And Unity's asset store is having a massive spring sale from May 10th to June 2nd. There will be over 500 assets at 50% off during the entire duration of the sale. And I'm serious, they sent me a 
spreadsheet. I checked. It's over 500. And for the procedural levels that we're using in our game, we went with Edgar Pro, which will be a part of this sale. I checked. And it's so easy to use. So I'll show you how it works. You start by creating a room using tile maps. And then you got to tell it where the doors can go. Build at least one horizontal corridor and one vertical corridor so that there's actually something to connect the rooms together with. Then you create this graph that actually tells the level builder how you want those rooms connected together. So you decide the flow of the levels and you handcraft all of the rooms and it figures out how to connect them all together in a randomized way. And on top of the 50% sale for all of these assets, Unity is also offering a flash deal with no cap on quantities. And these ones you're going to want to grab quick because they start at 70% off for the first 12 hours and then they go down to 60% for 12 hours and then back down to 50% for the remainder of the sale, which is honestly still a really good deal. If you want more information, the time and dates of all upcoming flash sales will be listed on the Asset Store website with a countdown timer. So they'll be nice and easy to spot. Just click the link in the description to find out more. So we are halfway to our deadline already. We have a little game that's playable, but none of our actual core hooks are in there yet. All the stuff that's actually going to make the game really fun to play still needs to be created. I am exhausted. If you were thinking of making a game in 90 days, just don't. <laughs> Seriously though, I am a little bit tired, but I am also having a lot of fun and I am enjoying the process. But there is still lots to do and so little time to do it. I don't know if we're going to make our deadline of 90 days. I'm okay if we don't because I would rather delay the release of the game and actually give you guys something polished and good to play. But we are still going to try our very hardest to make it within the 90 days, so we'll see what happens. Like the video if you liked. Bye guys. I want to give a very special thank you to all of our Hall of Fame patrons, Jakob Yonduk, Zondra Kessler, Darren Perrine, Throbbing Wind, Fontaine Wait, Couch, and Christopher Nichols, as well as our Early Access patrons, Sayoma, Ken Wait, and Mason Crow. If you choose to support us on Patreon, you can get Early Access to all of our YouTube videos, monthly alpha builds, and more.